my name's Guy Kestevan. I've been a professional biking kit tester for over 25 years and today is my live ride review of the On One Whippet Hyper Value Carbon XC Hardtail. So before we get out on the moors and around all the woodland single track here uh, let's just have a quick look at the frame and spec details before it gets too dirty. So it's an XC racer and it's carbon. So the first thing that most racers are going to want to know is how much does that frame weigh? And the answer is 12-15 grams for a medium, uh, according to Planet X on one. But to be honest, they're normally, they don't bugger about with the weights. Uh, the ones when I have had a chance to weigh a frame, they've been pretty much spot on to what they've claimed. So I would suggest that that is pretty accurate and it equates to the overall build as well. Uh, but we'll go into more on that in a second. Uh, in terms of composition, it's T800, uh, T700 Torre carbon fibre, which is what you'll find on a lot of uh, carbon fibre bikes. Uh, it's kind of, you know, standard Far Eastern manufactured uh, layup there. But you've got some really neat details, actually. So just swing in under the uh, bars. You've got this uh, replaceable uh, cable guide here for the internal cable routing. That keeps it nice and secure there's no rattling or banging about which you can get on a lot pricier bikes than this you've got two bottle cage mounts there and you've also got i mean like i say it's a, it's a relatively old school frame uh, as you'll see when we get to the geometry but you've still got a mount there for a front mech if you want to run double rings and then you've got the internal cable routing there it's even uh will run di2 if you want uh, but as it stands, uh, single ring group sets throughout the range. This is, but back to the frame, you've got little metal protection plate bonded on there, behind the chainstay, big chunky chainstays, which we'll talk about later when we start going uphill and getting the power down. Relatively slim seat stays with nice flat profile on there. No bridges across. I mean, Planet X put this on one put this as 2.3 inch tyre clearance and that's what these ranges are but I reckon you could sneak a bit wider if you're running a low tread but certainly you know you'd have no problem in one of those old uh, mountain mayhem wattle and daub sludge fests uh, with this kind of clearance and the tyres it's running now and then coming up here you can see I've opted for the uh, just for the remote I've, I've opted for the remote routed Selkoff dropper post on this build, which is an additional extra. Uh, bikes start at, I think it's $12.99 for fully rigid fork and full SRAM SX. This bike has a SID uh, front fork upgrade, which I think is £400 at the moment, and then a uh, dropper post on the back, like I say there. So this is kind of more progressive XC spec. I mean, that's the 35 mil legged uh, SID, so 110 mil of travel. And it's actually a 44 mil offset as well. So together with that 50 mil stem on there and these super wide, well, for a flat bar anyway, 780 mil Selkoff carbon handlebars, you're getting, you know, a very, very modern feeling front end. And in terms of fork and cockpit, geometry, not so modern, very much a traditional XC set of numbers, you've got 69.5 degree head angle, 73.7 degree seat angle, and then reach on this large is 445 mil. Uh, that does increase slightly on the extra large, as you'd hope, I think it goes up to 455, but then you're looking at a 520 mil uh, seat tube on there, which, you know, you're just not you're not going to get as long a stroke to drop a post in there certainly but you know there is there is the option to stretch it out if you don't need as much space between the saddle on the frame and then moving down to the back end chain stays are four three five uh, like i say this is the sram gx build so you get you know the nice shiny sram gx alloy cranks and you get sram's gx rear mech the chain and the cassette are the heavier sram sx so you know, that's obviously a price point move to get the bike. It's such an affordable spec, but that does add a lot of weight, particularly with the cassette. And it means you're on an HG driver rather than an XD driver. So it's going to be harder to uh, upgrade to a lighter cassette in future. Although I did find out that Garbarook uh, do an HG compatible Eagle cassette, which does save a lot of weight because it's full anodized alloy. Then the wheels are, again, pretty heavy uh the rims are fine they're wtb i30 tubeless rims 
but then you've got 2.35 inch WT you've got 2.3 inch WTB Ranger tires and these are wire bead and they're not tubeless so you've got inner tubes in there so as it stands complete bike weight is 12.6 kilos which obviously quite heavy for an xc bike but just by switching out the wheels to some proven race xc carbons i got it down to 10.2 straight away with some lightweight wheels on there so definitely potential to get this bike a lot lighter you know proper race weight and still be relative you know and still be super affordable and just coming in onto the bars you get srams g2 uh four pot pistons it's not the lightest pro so you get srams g2 you get SRAM's G2 brakes with uh, reach adjustable lever and four pot brakes down at the front with 180 mil rotor. So again, not the lightest brakes you could have on there, but a good serviceable, powerful, reliable setup. And the other thing to remember with all on one builds is that they are built to order. So you can swap the stem, the bar and uh, other componentry, saddle. Although to be fair, you know, we rode these saddles a long way across Morocco with no complaint. Uh, and that's another aspect of this bike I'll get into later uh, while we're riding because frankly I've stood about uh, too long chatting about this bike Let's get out on the trails and see how it actually rides because if you like old-school XC with some really nice modern Componentry in an affo very affordable package then I think you're in for a treat with this Whippet so As you saw from the static torque round This is quite traditional in shape But to be honest, I think that's exactly what a lot of traditional cross-country riders want. You know, not everyone buys into the slacker, longer vibe. And if you want a more compact, manoeuvrable bike for twitching and tweaking around natural trails, then I just don't happy with the older shape bike you've got and maybe want to switch onto 29er or a lightweight frame or eagle or modern fork then it's exactly the kind of package you should be looking for not everyone wants something as radical that scott i posted a review on the other way and the fact that base level whippets literally a tenth of the price of that scale is uh, quite remarkable when you consider they're both cross-country carbon R tails that do a very similar job in a very similar way to be honest and while these WTB ranges are the heavier non-tubeless spec because they didn't have the tubeless ready versions in stock when I spec the bike and I thoroughly would thoroughly recommend trading up if you can but even so they're a really good fast rolling classic XC tyre and despite the small knobs you still get a decent amount of grip with them for more natural trails and as you can see, those junky chain stays make short work of steep climbs, plenty of power transfer. They're really efficient for getting the big miles in over the big moors. Bloody love it up here. I mean, XC doesn't have to be racing. I think for most people, it's getting out on the moors like this. And that's, this bike's an absolute bargain for that. And where better to ride a Whippet cross country bike than God's own county of Yorkshire. I'm up in North Yorkshire, you know, I'm on one of the base down in Rotherham, South Yorkshire, but you know, Whippet's always been a traditional symbol of the county and this bike is just exactly that light fast but a really dependable and durable bike as well i know people who've had 
whippets and lurchers, the previous bike of this type from on one for years. Raced them, rallied them, ridden them hard day in, day out. Frames have been absolutely spot on. Even though, you know, just over 1200 grams for a medium, it's a pretty lightweight chassis. But the ride quality is really good as well. A lot of super stiff carbonar tail, especially kind of older ones that just blow your feet off the pedals, wouldn't carry speed well at all. But those slimmer, flatter rear stays combined with decent sized. 29er wheels and that excellent Sid fork up front. Plus, on this spec, you've got the dropper post, so you can get your butt out of the way and get your body moving around to keep control. Especially with this 780mm Selkoff bar on. I mean, I'm not going to pretend you're not going to find it a bit twitchy coming off a slacker bike or if you do want more stability you know you might want more of that down country trail hand angle and a longer top tube we're still very capable for all sorts of off-piece riding with that 69.5 degree head angle 73.7 seat and relatively short 445 mil reach. What it really thrives at is twisty, tweaky, classic single track like this. I mean, how many old school races? Well, probably new ones as well. It's a while since I've done the XC race. Does this remind you of the best bits of a Bingley Ember or Catterick back in the 90s? But, with all those modern advances of sequential single ring SRAM shifting, tubeless rims, and that dropper post and Sid fork upgrade, if you go for that. But even with a high post and the basic RockShox 35 gold build, this is a bike that's going to be not only a lot of fun for this kind of riding but also really quick really agile really responsive just proper little pilot's machine that lets you get really involved and relishes the fun bits of tight techie single track like this yay See, it even finds the line that I normally can't find in here. And it's funny, I mailed, uh, contacted Tom, the designer, because I'd never asked what ABSF stood for, which you get on the seat tube of all these on one bikes. He said, oh, awesome bikes, serious fun. And like I say, I think you can add seriously fast to the awesome bikes monogram on this one <laughs> a joy to cover ground quickly on especially like I say if you chuck some lighter wheels in and get it down to that 10k weight or even lighter I mean properly upgradable chassis this and frames are only 499 599 sold separately so something to really explore in terms of very affordable dream build in the same way as I'm exploring these trails in here. Oh, it's just a great bike for all kinds of proper pedal powered performance fun. Hey, still going on and on. On this on one, 
Oh, what a great trail. And what a cracking bargain of a bike to be doing it on as well. Yes. And the nice thing is, because it is light and responsive, you're not, I don't think it goes this way, entirely dependent on gravity being behind you for your thrills. And even at low speeds, that tighter, shorter wheelbase steering really helps you keep online. I think this is where it stops though. Too wintry to get wet feet today. And what XC ride would be complete without a never ending fire road climb? But I've got lockout on my fork. I've got a fast rolling range of tyres, the 29ers, and they've got a lightweight carbon fork. So, what's to worry about? Plus, if you find yourself riding more gravel or once a lightweight bikepacking rig can get this whip it with a rigid fork which is what our photographer Mick rode when we did our adventure in Morocco with the Titus bikes What do you reckon Mick? It's been decent Yeah? Yeah It's quite a comfortable bike really considering it's carbon hard clear Yeah It's not done let me down yet Yeah Really used to having a rigid fork, but fork's pretty comfortable by itself anyway. So yeah, it's been good. So it's actually a really versatile piece of kit. Is this whip it? You can uh, whip it into all sorts of shapes and situations. Sorry, I'll shut up now and concentrate on breathing. So it's the shortest day of the year. And the solstice sun is setting now, ready to get started on its journey towards summer. And so it's time to call time on my whippet adventure over the moors and round the forests and exploring streams and single track. But I really can't think of a more enjoyable way to have uh, made the most of those hours on trails like this than on a proper Yorkshire XC bike, like this Whippet. It. It's been great, it's lightweight, it's fast. It's actually pretty capable with that fork and the dropper post uh, on there and, and the wide bars, or you can, you know, go more trad with a standard post or even a rigid fork and make something entirely different out of it. But at its heart, it's a responsive, light, very good value cross country bike. So, massive thanks to uh, On One, Karnak for sponsoring this video. Massive thanks to my Patreon subscribers as well who pledge on a monthly basis and they get exclusive early and extended edit edits and they get them ad free as well. So if you really like what I'm doing with the channel, then uh, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Make sure you subscribe as well, please. Uh, I notice half the people watching my videos aren't even some subscribers and it makes a massive difference when YouTube's looking at the subscriber count and when other brands looking at the subscriber count uh, to uh, what I get access to and how, my, how widely my videos are shared. So subscribe, click for notifications so you know when the next video comes up and give this a thumbs up as well if you wouldn't mind. Because obviously if you've got this far, I hope you've enjoyed it. But most of all, if, I've, if you've got any questions or just want to comment on the videos or ask me anything about the whip here, about the on one range or just riding in general. I've done a lot of it over the past few decades, so uh, I'm always happy to share that knowledge and experience with you guys because a lively comment section just makes these videos a lot more enjoyable to do and means you get more out of them. But for now, I think that's officially the sun gone down. So, it's time to say goodbye to the shortest day of 2022 and also goodbye to you guys. I've been Guy Kesterman on Guy Kest TV. Live rider reviewing the on one whip it an absolutely cracking bargain of a bike for a traditional XC or what a lot of people riding gravel bikes should really be riding.